this is after two days of excavating. Um, some really rocky soil, um, but uh, we've got a, a mostly uh, level base for putting in the foundation. There's a couple of giant bumps that you'll see, like here and here and here um, that are uh, terribly unlevel. Um, those are basically pieces of bedrock. Um, and uh, we, we could have rented a, a jackhammer or something to take that out. Um, but given the foundation type we're putting in uh, and we're just going to have a crawl space, uh, there's not really a need for it. So, I've got some bad news. Um, looks like I'm gonna have to redo uh, all of this. I um, I was a little bit int interested in um, uh, what the wood treatment that I'm using was from a chemical perspective since I'm sawing it and having a bunch of sawdust that I'm breathing in. I thought I wanted to know and I, uh, I guess I wanted to know if there's any bad effects of this leaching into the ground and so um, I went back to the Menards website uh, to, to, to get the safety data sheet of this AC2 stuff and when I did I realized that my Menards doesn't stock uh, a ground contact version of the plywood I've been using which is really strange because um, they sold me ground contact uh, plywood and so I uh, went through the pile of plywood that I bought, and uh, I, I found that one one of the sheets actually had a, a sticker on it that obviously I should have uh, looked at the second I started loading sheets, and I didn't. Uh, and it's it's not ground contact; it's uh, it's above ground. Um, thankfully, at least all the other lumber they sold me is ground contact, so all of the Structural parts uh, are fine, um, but the plywood isn't. Uh, it's really frustrating, but it's my own fault for not checking properly. Um, so I guess this is a a reminder to to keep an eye on the on the little stickers, even if well, whatever. Um, so I've I've been debating. Um, leaving it uh, since it'll be a conditioned space and uh, there's a vapor barrier on the outside um, and there would be the option of, of coming back 10 years from now or something and, and, and replacing it uh, if it starts rotting. I'm, I'm, I'm still contemplating it I suppose because it's going to be a lot of work to, to take the plywood back out but um, the downside of doing that is that it, it could rot, which will open crevices and cracks in, in the foundation, uh, which in turn uh, will let things like termites into the structure. And so 
waiting for it to start rotting uh, is kind of asking for other trouble. So here's your reminder to check the stickers, uh, even if uh, the person helping you load it tells you different. That's rude. Whatever. It's not their job to... Well, actually, it kind of is. It's my fault. Whatever. So this is ending up a little bit backwards because, as you can tell from this, there's actually a good bit of house on top of me right now. Um, but I didn't go, do a, a good job really talking about the foundation uh, as I filmed it, so shooting this towards the end. Um, there's a couple of things to say about the foundation. Um, the first of which is that I didn't want to build a foundation. Um, we budgeted and hired somebody to do it um, because everybody that I know uh, that does construction or that has experience with construction was very adamant um, that you shouldn't you shouldn't DIY uh, a foundation for a large house. Um, unfortunately, uh, it, it turns out that it, it's really hard to to hire contractors, um, and so. Um, firm that we contracted to do it basically just never showed up um, and after delaying the whole project by, by two months we eventually gave up and stopped calling them told them to, to forget about it and uh, there's nobody else in the neighborhood that does foundations uh, or nobody w that was willing to come out here to do it at least nobody reputable um, and so we started looking around for alternatives and uh, this is kind of what we ended up with uh, so uh, this is a this is a variant of uh, a foundation system called a permanent wood foundation, uh, which means that uh, you build a foundation with uh, treated lumber um, according to, to certain specifications. I guess there's a couple of things to say about it. Um, if you're you know, I think if if you're building something like this. I, I wouldn't recommend building a foundation. It's been by far the most stressful part of the build uh, in terms of uncertainty. I'm still not sure uh, it'll work properly. It's probably going to need remedial work. Um, but we did save a lot of money building it this way, and it was interesting learning about all the aspects of foundation construction. Uh, so in terms of the permanent wood foundation system, uh, the most important thing that I learned is that there are grades of treatment and because this is going to be buried you can't just buy treated lumber uh, at your local uh, hardware store and hope for the best you need to make sure that the lumber you're buying uh, is rated for burial uh, basically they inject uh, tiny 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 copper granules uh, into the uh, actually into the, the cells of the, of the wood uh, which makes it resistant to fungal and and, uh, um, and uh, uh, insect attack. So that's how it stays, uh, you know, free from rot. Uh, you should expect, from what I understand from uh, reading about this, we should expect 50 to 100 years of lifetime in this before we need to start you know, replacing stuff. Um, Another thing to mention is that this is not entirely identical to, to the permanent wood foundation spec because it's using these uh, thicker members uh, every four feet and that is because those line up perfectly uh, with where the weight of the building is going to be coming down on these uh, uh, triangle members. And so every four feet we have one of these triangles, uh, which you'll see in another video, and the weight, you know, they, they hold up actually the entire building the 
first floor, the second floor, and the roof, and all of that weight gets transferred onto here and onto these members and eventually down onto the ground. Um, right, so that actually brings me to uh, forces around foundations. Um, there's uh, lots of different ways that foundations fail. Uh, I think the most common way is through water problems, uh, but um, a lot of them have to do with the foundation uh, moving in various ways. The most obvious way is that it, it can sink, you know, in some sections. Um, uh, less obvious ways is that there's tremendous force from the outside uh, pushing the foundation in, uh, which you see a lot in these heavy clay soil uh, clay soils. You'll see uh, foundations that are buckled in or that are buckled out um, because of uh, forces shifting the foundation. Uh, we're in tremendous luck here because we're sitting on top of this uh, beautiful red granite. And so in terms of sinking down, uh, I'm not very worried. It's all standing directly on bedrock. Um, that's why we have these, I don't know if you can see these in the video. Yeah, but we're basically sitting on little concrete uh, footers. But if you were building this on top of anything other than bedrock, you need bigger footers. Um, overall, um, there's all kinds of calculations involved in building foundations, and they don't, uh, like there's too many things uh, that you have to know. Uh, there's so many things you don't know that you don't know. I certainly don't feel like I know enough to build a foundation. I felt like this was kind of uh, the only option I had, so hopefully it'll hold up. Um, so uh, then you have these side forces, right? And uh, if you read up on the permanent wood foundation system, specs uh, from industry organizations, the, the way that they're meant to deal with that is either by having a, um, uh, a concrete floor uh, at the base that you uh, anchor the, uh, the walls to, which we don't have here. Um, the, the other alternative is to, uh, to build up uh, gravel or, or infill on the inside uh, to, to, to make up for uh, what's going on, on the outside. Um, we're still deciding whether to do that because um, I'm, I'm really lucky in that uh, a good friend is a structural engineer and so uh, he's helping out run some numbers on uh, if we can just reinforce by using regular wood members. Um, so talking through the details here, um, like I said, there's a, a wood post to carry the bulk of the load every four feet. There's also 24 on center uh, regular two by sixes uh, treated. Uh, outside of that, there's uh, uh, treated plywood, and on top of the plywood, there's then going to be a polyethylene sheet, so a, a, a vapor, water, and air permeable, impermeable, sorry, uh, layer to basically keep this uh, protected, which means that there's no way for, for vapor to go in this direction, which is a tremendous problem. It means you need to make sure that there's good opportunity to dry inwards. Um, the reason for that, of course, is because there's going to be a bunch of dirt on it, and that's going to be wet. And so it wouldn't be dry in the other direction anyway. Um, on top of the polyethylene, you'll then have a, uh, an air gap uh, to help it uh, shed water. The water's going to be going down towards the bottom, and then there's going to be uh, a drain system that carries it off. Um, really important to avoid standing water because that's going to end up making its way through, causing rot. Um, and then, yeah, some sort of stone veneer or something to make it look nice on top of that. 